Good morning, everybody. Happy Friday. You're going to hear my child in the background for just a minute. They're working on going outside. Sorry about that. Um, thank you for joining us today for our Just For Me in July series. I'm Hope Klein. I'm a health education field specialist with SDSU Extension. Today, we are going to be focusing on, um, Megan Jacobson's going to be taking us through um, some nutritional value tips in relation to self-care. So last week, we had our early childhood field specialist, Audrey Ryder, share some self-care techniques for individuals who are caretakers. If you missed that session, um, I think the recording uh, email that went out last or earlier this week didn't include the recording for last week's session, but you'll get it next week for sure. So today is celebrated as National Self-Care Day. International Self-Care Day um, is a worldwide campaign that's held annually on July 24th as a reminder that the benefits of self-care are experienced 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It celebrates the importance of self-care and encourages the public to practice responsible self-care. So now I'm going to read two different self-care quotes. Um, so I just want you to take a moment to really think about and reflect on these two quotes. Self-care is so important. When you take time to replenish your spirit, it allows you to serve others from the overflow. You cannot serve from an empty vessel. The other self-care quote I wanna share, the most powerful relationship you will ever have is the relationship with yourself. Okay, so for today, Megan Jacobson is going to be sharing some key nutrients individuals should include in their diets. Before I introduce Megan, we would like each of you to put your name, location, and how you heard about the series in the chat box. We would also like you to share what type of self-care sessions you would like to see in the future. So if you're comfortable sharing that, you can go ahead and type that in the chat box. You can reply to my reminder email that I sent about an hour ago, or you can also use the private message feature or the private chat feature on Zoom and just send me a private chat on what you would like to see in the future. Okay, Megan Jacobson is a registered dietitian and nutrition field specialist with SDSU Extension. Megan is the program coordinator for South Dakota suite of chronic disease self-management workshops called Better Choices, Better Health. She enjoys helping people manage and prevent chronic diseases through proper nutrition. If you have any questions, please feel free to type them in the chat box. Otherwise, we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, Megan, I'm going to turn it over to you. Wonderful. Thank you, Hope, and good morning, everyone. I uh, hope I will wait till you pull up my slides here. Thank you again for agreeing to do that for me. So today, like Hope said, I will be um, talking about some key uh, nutrients to include in our diets. And I'm going to discuss some ways to really just overall uh, support our immune system with good nutrition. And a healthy diet and good nutrition is always important, but especially during times like these when we're on high alert due to the COVID-19 pandemic, it's so important to learn how proper nutrition can help keep us healthy. Next slide. And our gut works to keep us healthy. When our gut is compromised, we face health consequences. Around 70 million people in the U.S. actually suffer from digestive illnesses and digestive problems. The role of a healthy gut essentially is to allow water to enter our body and prevent the entry, entry of toxins. Essentially, it's a really good barrier between us and the outside world. On the other hand, when our gut is distressed, it can really allow dangerous compounds to enter into our body, which leads to conditions like irritable bowel syndrome, inflammatory bowel disease, celiac disease, and food sensitivities, bacterial imbalances, and leaky gut, which is really the junctions uh, between our epithelial cells and our intestinal tract. They uh, loosen, uh, so they're tight junctions normally, but they loosen and then they allow toxins um, into our circulatory system. 
which can really be influenced by chronic inflammation, things like chronic stress, certain pharmaceuticals like NSAIDs, uh, bacterial balance, malnutrition, and compounds in our food. Um, some people are highly sensitive to things like gluten, casein, lectins, and fructose. Next slide. So disruptions in our gut not only cause digestive issues, but they also may result in some um, unfortunate symptoms like brain fog, maybe um, if you're experiencing some chronic or ongoing fatigue, weight gain, maybe inability to lose weight if you're trying to lose weight, hormone imbalance, mood disorders, joint pain, muscle aches, congestion, and various skin reactions like eczema or acne. We do know that a healthy gut barrier really depends on a balanced intestinal bacteria. So our gut lining contains around three to four pounds of bacteria. We actually have more bacteria in and around our bodies than we have cells. It also depends on intact mucosa. So our gut lining replaces itself every three to seven days, which is really interesting. It also depends on a healthy immune system. So almost 70% of our immune system cells live in and around our gut. Next slide. So we have an estimated 100 trillion microbes living in our gut. Ideally, there is a lot of diversity and different types of beneficial bacteria. Um, and ideally, most of these microbes are the good kind, uh, the good bacteria. And there's no overgrowth of pathogens or the bad bacteria. But unfortunately, most of us um, have too many pathogens, not enough beneficial bacteria or microbes, and not enough diversity. So beneficial bacteria are consistently turning over in our gut. We don't have a permanent supply. So to create diversity um, of bacteria in our gut, we really need to uh, replenish them through the foods we eat on a continual basis. So getting a variety of foods um, in um, daily is so important. Our microbes and beneficial gut bacteria really help to make vitamins and minerals from our for our bodies, specifically vitamins B12, K, B6, B5, B3, folate, and biotin. So it really helps with that nutrient digestion and absorption. It helps our bodies fight off pathogens and infections. It really affects how certain genes are expressed in our bodies. It controls our inflammation levels, and it helps our bodies metabolize food and the drugs that we consume. So the right diet really strengthens the gut and improves overall health and well-being. Next slide. So as referenced in the 2015-2020 Dietary Guidelines for Americans, many Americans do not consume enough potassium dietary fiber, choline, magnesium, calcium, iron, vitamins A, D, E, and C. So low intakes for most of these nutrients occur just due to our standard American diet is what we call it, um, and a lot of unhealthy overall eating patterns with low intakes of the following food groups, vegetables, fruits, whole grains, and dairy. So these food groups really just contain a lot of those essential nutrients that are lacking. Also, on the other hand, um, an overconsumption of refined sugar and starches from candy, soda, chips, breads, pizza, things like that, and inflammatory fats from fried, uh, fried foods or fast foods and alcohol can lead to an imbalance in our gut microbiome. So it's kind of a balance of that. It's an underconsumption of those healthy nutrients from the food groups and an overconsumption of uh, the unhealthy fats and the refined and processed items. So the best approach really is to consume a nutritional, nutritionally complete diet that can support our immune system. So what does that look like? On the next slide, you'll see that a nutritionally complete diet really just accounts for all the foods and beverages within an appropriate calorie level for us as an individual. And that really depends on our age, our sex, our height, weight, and physical activity level. And the food groups that are comprised um, include a variety of vegetables, fruits, especially from whole food sources, 
whole grains, low fat dairy, and a variety of protein from seafood, lean meat, poultry eggs, legumes, nut seeds, and soy, and a variety of healthy oils um, from olive oil or avocado. Um, so that is just really the bigger picture. And on the next slide, if you don't know what your recommended daily calorie intake is, a great resource for you would be to visit choosemyplate.gov and they have um, a calculator called the My Plate Plan. And this will help um, calculate your daily needs uh, for the different food group targets. So you can see here a snapshot of the My Plate Plan I did for myself and it breaks down kind of the daily serving sizes for each of those food groups that should be my target goal for the day. Um, it also includes a lot of great resources um, and more information, uh, depending on if you're a parent or an educator, um, a lot of great um, things that you can find on choosemyplate.gov. Okay, so let's dive into some foods. So this is kind of fun. So those, um, we just picked top eight, five uh, foods. There's so many more, but um, it's kind of fun to highlight some ones that can really boost your immune system. So jumping right in, uh, the first one is kefir. So if you guys have ever heard of kefir, tasted kefir, um, it can be um, come in a drinkable form and it contains a lot of great probiotics. And so probiotics are currently being researched for uh, the potential to improve our immune function and our gut health. They are the beneficial bacteria or those live cultures added to the product like the ones found in our gut. So to include more pro probiotics in your diet, you can look for fermented foods. And these include things like kimchi or uh, fermented uh, cabbage, sauerkraut, miso, yogurt, kombucha. And those are all great sources of um, those live active cultures that have been added to the product. Kefir also includes glucosinolates, which are a class of phytochemicals that influence our body's natural detox systems. And they're metabolized into a powerful antioxidant in our bodies called glutathione. And they're, kefir is really versatile. Like I said, you can drink it or you can add it to a smoothie. Um, you can get it in a variety of flavors or if you're looking for a lower sugar option, it comes unflavored as well. Okay, so the second one is uh, the class of cruciferous vegetables and dark leafy greens. Um, are, they're another great source of those glucosinolates and they're rich in fiber, vitamins, and minerals such as folate, vitamin A, C, and K. Important to note though is that the vitamin C content does drop after long storage times and um, when you use certain cooking methods. So try consuming them fresh or steamed. That's a great way to, to get them in and get that high vitamin C content. The next uh, food is mushrooms. So highlighting mushrooms, they're a great source of potassium. Uh, depending on the variety, they can also provide selenium and copper. They have a great, um, a lot of uh, B complex vitamins are also included in, uh, in mushrooms. And B vitamins really help release the energy from the fat, carbohydrates, and protein in the foods that we consumed, which is so important. They're really favorable in supporting immune health due to their vitamin B2 specifically um, that's comprised in them, as well as the beta glucan content. And mushrooms are so versatile, and they impart a fifth sense called umami. If you guys have ever heard of that or tasted a mushroom, you kind of get it. It's that savory, hearty, meat-like flavor. Um, and so you can incorporate them into a lot of dishes to increase the taste. The next food is red bell peppers. So red bell peppers contain an excellent source of vitamin C uh, to help support the immune system and they stimulate the formation of antibodies in our, in our system. They also are a great source of vitamin A, which help regulate our immune system, protect against infections, they keep our skin um, and tissues in our mouth, our stomach, and our intestines and respiratory system healthy. They're a great source of beta carotene, 
and um, you can eat them fresh. So fresh, remember that vitamin C content is best when it's fresh. Uh, for red bell peppers, I love to slice them up and keep them in my fridge and uh, eat them with hummus. So they're a great kind of like a crunch for, um, for snacking on dip. And the next food that we're gonna highlight is beans. So beans are an excellent source of uh, prebiotics. And prebiotics are in indigestible fiber that's not broken down, but fermented um, in our large intestine or our colon. And they really serve as the food for the probiotics or that good live uh, bacteria in our gut. They also contain a lot of iron, which is essential to supporting our oxygen circulation. And they also contain zinc, which is an es essential for organ function that really influences our immune system response. And if you have a hard time tolerating beans, some people do, um, you can try maybe some chickpeas or lentils. Those are really found to be better tolerated in some people who have sensitivities. Okay, the next is fatty fish. So this is a source of um, seafood from salmon, tuna, sardines, mackerel, and trout. Um, it contains a lot of omega-3 fatty acids, and omega-3s are great for supporting white blood cell production, decrease overall inflammation. Fatty fish is also a great source of vitamin D. And the dietary guidelines for Americans really recommend adults consume at least eight ounces of fatty fish a week. So that's broken down to generally two four ounce servings. Okay, and the next foods on the list are garlic and onions. And these can be added to so many dishes. Um, and they contain a large amount of allicin or other sulfur containing compounds with great immune supporting properties. They have a lot of antimicrobial properties as well to protect against harmful bacteria like E. coli or food um, illness and infections. Uh, they can protect against fungus like candida and parasites and viruses. They're also a source of prebiotics. So that's that food for our probiotics in our gut, that live bacteria in our gut. And a tip uh, when using when using fresh fresh garlic, excuse me, is to let it stand for about 10 minutes after crushing the fresh garlic to really help uh, release and maintain those beneficial properties. Okay, and the last food um, or beverage rather um, that we're going to talk about today is green tea. And green tea is a wonderful beverage to consume. It's high in antioxidants oxidants that really enhance our immune function and protect our bodies against oxidative stress. It also contains an amino acid that supports our T cells, which are one of the main components of our adaptive immune system. And something fun to try if you've never had matcha tea. Um, so of course, uh, green tea comes in a variety of just like the hot, um, you can get different flavors. Um, but matcha tea, is a, um, it's different than regular brewed tea. It's actually a fine powder made from green tea leaves. And it's the only tea where the leaves are consumed as part of the drink rather than being infused in the hot water. And it contains more antioxidant content than regular brewed tea. So if you've never tried it, um, it's a really great drink. And if you're looking for it at the stores, the culinary grade is gonna be the highest um, antioxidant content for you. Okay, so just like a healthy diet, exercise can contribute to general good health and therefore to a healthy immune system. So it's important to really look at these other immune supporting habits. Um, it also may contribute even more directly uh, by promoting some good circulation. So when we get in enough physical activity a day, it helps our cells and substances of the immune system move throughout the body more freely and do their job more efficiently. So of course, sleep, managing stress, making sure we're hydrating, uh, getting in around 32 ounces of water a day, uh, moving our body, and then um, quitting smoking if we smoke or don't smoke, and consuming alcohol in moderation are all wonderful healthy habits to include. 
Okay, so I want to talk about some resources. So here's some resources that we will be sharing with you today. Um, the first is some two, uh, two guides, and they're about 30 page guides. They're fully comprehensive, and they're from the uh, Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. Uh, the first one is the Healthy Meal Planning and Shopping Guide, and this one is so wonderful. It goes through meal planning for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks. Um, it also touches on specific areas um, and diseases, so uh, it covers diabetes, uh, gluten-free, heart health, vegetarian, Mediterranean diet style. Um, it goes through some grocery shopping tips, how to read food labels when you're grocery shopping at the store, uh, how to stock your pantry for when you're cooking and having those great pantry staples. Um, it covers food safety. And then the next one is cooking basics. Now this guide really dives into um, cooking methods and how to get comfortable in the kitchen, what kitchen equipment is, are uh, nice to have on hand. Um, it uh, covers some prep cooking, one pot meals, quick and easy meals. Um, it talks about making your own marinades, salad dressings and sauces and flavoring your foods with some, a variety of herbs and spices which is really nice, especially when we're um, incorporating more vegetables into our cooking, finding ways that we can um, spice them up and flavor them um, helps us uh, consume them more and get our families to consume them more as well. And on the right hand side here is uh, the Food Keeper, which you can access on, um, online, but here it's shown it's also in a uh, phone app. It was developed by the USDA and it gives a full long list of all foods and beverages and their storage, appropriate storage time. So it really helps you maximize uh, the freshness and the quality of your foods um, because there's nothing more disappointing than uh, going to the store or getting some produce and then having it rot or um, go bad. Um, and so, so that's a great resource uh, for you as well. Uh, the next slide just is a snapshot of where you can find some healthy recipes. Um, so I just listed them here. I believe that this list is also in one of the guides that we will be giving you. And then I do want to highlight uh, there are some great programs through Extension. On the next slide here you can see the Pick It, Try It, Like It, Preserve It program. All these materials are filled with some great tips for selecting preparing and cooking, um, as well as preserving and canning a wide variety of fruits and vegetables. So go check that out. Um, also on our extension page, you will see a lot of great information um, on the next slide, Hope, on food preservation. So um, there's a full series, and if you have some garden produce that you'll be harvesting here soon, or just interested in learning more, you can visit the website, um, SDSU Extension website, or our YouTube page. Um, and then of particular interest, they just did a video on fermentation. So if you um, do some home fermentation, or if you're looking in um, and curious, to do that or just the benefits of fermentation, that's those uh, probiotics, the good bacteria that, um, that we can add to our guts uh, for our gut health. So I just wanted to, to point that out and go check those materials out as well. I wanna wrap up by just providing you um, some additional resources for you to participate in. Um, I am a, I help coordinate this program called Better Traces Better Health and I am actually a leader for the workshops as well. Um, so this program covers um, chronic disease, diabetes, chronic pain, and cancer. It's a six-week series, and currently right now with social distancing guidelines, we're not holding in-person workshops, but we do have a variety of options to uh, join from your home. So we have live online workshops. Um, we also have um, an at-home toolkit as well that you can get ordered to your home, um, and then our leaders uh, check in weekly with some group calls. So for more information, I encourage you to check out our, our Facebook page. That's where we have a full listing of our events and you can register online. You can also call our toll-free uh, toll number right there listed on the slide or check out our website for more information. Um, on the next slide here is another great program that we offer called Walk With Ease. They do also have the in-person group sessions that are not going on right now due to COVID, um, but there is a self-guided option. 
So the self-guided option, uh, you get a guidebook, some weekly emails, and access to a private Facebook support group. And the Walk With Ease program is also six weeks long, and it really just goes through safe ways to incorporate physical activity into your daily life. It's a fun program. Okay, so I didn't leave like much time for questions, but I hope that you guys um, enjoyed and, and learned uh, something new. And I will turn it back over to Hope if there was any more questions submitted. And I believe we have a poll. Yes, um, so Megan, we didn't get any questions specific, but I have a question for you. Um, I'm curious if you consume kefir and if you use it for other, if you use it in other ways other than smoothies. Yeah, I actually, I pour it over my yogurt. Um, I, I love kefir. I generally drink it. So just quick and simple. Um, but I do not cook with it. Um, I generally just, yeah, as a, um, as a drink or I do a lot of smoothies. I love smoothies lately. Um, I have two young kids. And so I know, hope you can relate with that too, having kids in the home. Um, I throw in avocado. Um, I throw in spinach. Um, I'm actually, I just have, you can buy, um, frozen fruit and that keeps in the, in the deep freeze for, for a long, long time. Um, with no added sugar. And it's just a great way to get in your fruits and vegetables um, and probiotics in a drink. It's so easy. So um, smoothies is just a great, easy way to incorporate Kefir. Okay, great, thank you. I see well, Mary great. said, where do you find it? And I should have included some resources, but generally at your local grocer, um, it should be in the dairy section. So next to your yogurts or your milk, um, if they don't have it, you can definitely ask um, if they would supply it for you. Otherwise, um, maybe just go and ask to help them, you know, if you haven't seen it before in the grocery store, maybe see if they carry it. Well, and I wonder too, like, um, you know, like Hy-Vee, they have where the milk and everything is, but then they also have the natural food section. So if you don't see it where you would normally get milk and yogurt, maybe check the natural food section as well. Yes, that's that's a great tip, definitely. Okay, I have a poll that I'm gonna launch quick. And then if anyone else has, has questions, we do still have a couple minutes if you wanna put them in the chat box. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and launch the poll. It's just a couple of questions. Um, so the first one you should see on your screen now, did you feel like today's session was a good use of your time? I have a couple more responses. I'm just going to give it about five more seconds for people to provide their feedback. Okay, and then I'll share results. Um, so most people thought this session was a good use of their time. That's wonderful. And then we have three questions total. So here's question number two. Um, how has your knowledge on the benefits of ways to practice this self-care activity how confident are you? So how confident are you in your ability to choose different food items um, to take care of your gut health? All right, we got a 100% response rate on this one. Um, it looks like people's confidence is doing pretty well. Um, again, I can share Megan's email in the chat box. So if you have further questions, you can ask. All right, and I'm gonna launch the last poll. And just how confident are you that you could perform this self-care activity on your own? And then it looks like we do have a question for you, Megan, from Enid, um, wondering if you have a kombucha drink you recommend. Sorry about the background noise, everyone. Yes, um, I know there's a variety of kombucha drinks out there. I think, um, and I don't know, I don't have an exact, exact brand that I would recommend. Um, I would just read the label and maybe choose one that has um, a lower sugar content. Um, but other than that, I think it's Kavita 
that is a different type of kombucha. Um, I forget what, now I'm just totally blanking, but I know they add, um, it's not the live active culture, it's more of a, it's like a ground powder, and I forget what they call that now, I'm totally blanking. But the other brands, if you see floaties or kind of that residue on the bottom that sticks, um, that is actually the live and active cultures. You're not supposed to drink those. So if you um, have um, any cautions for um, like infection or, um, you know, if that would be a problem for you, I would go more with like the Kimbita brand, um, which does not actually have those live active cultures, uh, but still good for your beneficial bacteria. Okay, thank you, Megan. Um, we haven't gotten any more questions, so I think we're okay to wrap up our session. So thank you everyone for joining us. We hope you learned something you can take with you. And we hope to see you next week. Nikki is going to be taking you through a short yoga sequence and discussing tips to improve your sleep routine at night. Thanks everyone, have a great Friday and weekend. <laughs>